In this video, we are going to talk about the hep simplex viruses, right? But before that, I would like to introduce the herpes viride family, right? So the viruses in this family uh, can be divided into three subfamilies. Alpha herpes virine, beta herpes virine, and gamma herpes virine. So on alpha herpes virine, these viruses usually infect epithelial cells and cause latent infections in sensory ganglia. And the species in this subfamily include herpes simplex viruses 1 and 2, that's HSV1 and HSV2. And also the other species is varicella zoster virus or VZV, also known as the human herpes virus 3. On beta herpes virine, these viruses usually infect salivary glands and other inner organs, and the species include the cytomegalovirus or CMV, also known as human herpes virus 5. The other species is human herpes virus 6 and human herpes virus 7. On gamma herpes virine, we find uh, viruses which usually infect lymphoid cells and they, these viruses have highest uh, oncogenic properties like considering the whole Hepsferid family, right? And the species include Epstein-Barr virus, which is also known as uh, EBV or human Heps virus 4. And the other species is the Kaposi sarcoma associated virus or human herpes virus 8. Now, uh, let's talk about the herpes simplex viruses 1 and 2. Now, the herpes simplex viruses have uh, a linear DNA and they have an envelope, right? So this envelope is actually derived from the uh, nuclear envelope. Remember, they replicate inside the nucleus of the host cell. So we also see intranuclear inclusion bodies, also known as uh, cowdery bodies or lip shoots bodies, right? Right, you need to remember that the HSV1 usually uh, cause infections above the waist and HSV2 cause infections below the waist, right? Uh, and the HSV1, usually it... Uh, it lies dormant inside the trigeminal ganglia, while it's the HSV2 lies dormant in the sacral ganglia. Now let's start with hep simplex 1, right? So hep simplex 1 virus or on transmission mechanism is usually through respiratory secretions and saliva. And there are about six diseases which you need to remember, right? And we'll uh, discuss them one by one. The first one is called herpes labialis, right? Uh, and it looks like this. So it's also known as uh, cold sores. The second one is known as hepatic gingivus stomatitis, right? And it looks like this. Okay, and the third one is hep simplex encephalitis. So this encephalitis usually uh, cause uh, hemorrhage and necrosis of uh, temporal lobe in most cases uh, and also uh, frontal lobe, right? Uh, and this will lead to uh, conditions like seizures, confusions, etc. Erythema multiforme, right? And it looks like this. It's actually a hypersensitivity reaction. Right, let's move on. The hepatic Whitlow, right? Hepatic Whitlow appears like dew drop on a rose petal, right? So it, it looks like this. And this is usually associated with, uh, you know, you know, those dandies who usually spend most of their time in, in oral cavities of uh, their patients, right? So it's an occupational risk. 
Okay, let's move on. And the last condition is known as hip simplex virus keratoconjunctivitis, right? So it looks like this. This is uh, keratitis uh, on a uh, fluorescent stain, right? And this is another image, right? So here, uh, what you are seeing here is also known as um, sepiginous corneal ulcer. Sepiginous corneal ulcer. Okay, let's review the conditions caused by hip simplex or one virus, right? Uh, number one, hip labialis. Number two, hepatic gingival stomatitis. Hip simplex encephalitis. Erythema multiforme. Hepatic whitlow and keratoconjunctivitis. Now let's talk about the hip simplex 2 virus, right? So uh, on transmission mechanism, the main one is sexual intercourse, right? And also perinatal, because this virus is also considered among the torch infections, right? And the conditions you need to remember here, we have four, right? Genital herpes, neonatal herpes, hepatic whitlow, right? So uh, on HSV1, I said uh, those who are at risk are mainly dentists, right? And this one, uh, HSV2, since I said in most cases it uh, causes a disease below the waist. So usually gynecologist, right? So it's an occupational risk there, right? And the other condition is um, hep simplex encephalitis, right? So in this case, viral meningitis, right? Um, uh, of herpes viruses are mostly caused by HSV2, right? Than those which are caused by HSV1, right? So let's conclude this video by talking about uh, diagnosis and treatment. So on diagnosis, we can prepare zanxmines from the lesions, right? And in, in this, we will see multinucleated giant cells. The other method is uh, GMC stain, and uh, we can detect the cowdery bodies. And to detect the uh, viral DNA, we can use polymerase chain reaction. For treatment, uh, we can use acyclovir, valacyclovir, and also we actually have a, a genetically inactivated hep simplex 2 vaccine. So this vaccine is used to prevent primary and recurrent HSV2 disease.